Hello, 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 hello. How is everybody doing today? Uh, this is Tira Jarvis with Kefi Coaching, and this is Transformation Tuesday. I come to you live every Tuesday. I've been doing that now since uh, probably June of last year. Uh, every week, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. And we've been exploring and discussing mindset, motivation, and transformation. And today what I want to talk about is... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the fact that the transformation process actually starts with desire and the desire to either have something that you don't already have. And that typically is going to require something that you haven't done before, which in most in most situations is going to require some kind of uh, learning, some kind of skill building, habit building, uh, some kind of capacity building to get you uh, over the hump and to the next level. So I thought we would talk about um, learning and how important a commitment to continuous learning is on your life journey and your journey to fulfillment and uh, your quest for evolving and growing and transformation. And, you know, it's been a it's not only a personal interest of mine, it's one of my strengths. So for anybody that's taken Gallup Strength Finders, Learner is one of my strengths. And I love the process of learning. It's, it's exciting to me. And as you know, with strengths, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. I can also get stuck in learning mode and not go into doing mode. So we've talked about a variety of things over the course of the last several months on how you might approach learning. But, uh, you know, universal interventions, I have a heightened listening for this, and over the last, you know, several days, things have been coming to me about learning and how adults go about learning and reinforcing some of the things that I know and also creating maybe some new thinking around that. And so last Sunday on CBS Sunday Morning, uh, the interviewer interviewed Stacey Abrams, and those of us might know her from the last election and the critical role that she played politically. What I was not aware of is that she's a successful author, and she's written at least nine fiction books under a different name, and she has one now that's coming out under her own name that is still a political drama uh, um, around... Um, Anyway, it's a it's a fiction about politics and drama in that setting. But the they brought up the question of you know how much time that takes with such a busy life, and how do you write these books, and you know how do you have this successful author career when you're doing that? And she said something that struck me in that her mom was a librarian or a research librarian, and she said she learned very easily how to be strategic, how to think strategically on how to learn. And so that caused me to go, well, do I think strategically around how I learn and what kinds of things am I doing um, that would consist, you know, would, would fit in a, the topic of a strategy around learning and how you would make a plan to go about that. And there's a couple of things that I've uh, done for myself uh, throughout all my various transformations that I've created in my life, but also when I work with uh, my clients. And it's the notion that personal and professional development is a process and it's a continuous process. And you've heard quotes like, if you stop growing, you get stagnant, you're going to be left behind. And it's really the act of growing and learning that keeps you vibrant and relevant and uh, actively actively living your life. So as I share these things, I want you to think about maybe some skills that you're interested in adding to your toolkit. And it's interesting because the velocity of change, I mean, it's only, the velocity is only increasing. And the amount of change is putting that much more of a demand on constantly assessing skills, abilities, tools, applications, all different kinds of things. So here's just a couple of things that you might think about when you look at how you want to go about learning. You know, you want to, um, you want to start with making it meaningful for you. And it needs to be meaningful in a way that it's not just book learning anymore. There's so many things out there. There's 
podcasts and there's applications and there's videos and webinars and movies and, you know, blog posts and all different kinds of things in that regard. And, you know, when we go back to normal, there'll be the traditional conferences and, but there's webinars, there's all different kinds of things. So you can kind of tap in, in this multimedia approach to absorb new information and find a way that works for you and, and do it a little bit quicker. Um, and, and, and you want to connect it to your life. So I've always talked about adults learn best by experience and you need to get in the deep end if you want to learn how to swim or if you want to learn how to speak Italian. Think about ways that you can actually converse with people that speak Italian, not just do like a tutorial. But you're looking for an experience that brings it into your life so you can practice it. And that might be new habits. That might be... Um, things that you're gonna let go of, those kinds of things. And um, so building new habits around that is key. You know, for me, um, I'm looking at two areas and it's interesting that both of the teachings, whether it's my financial uh, advisor who's, uh, I'm in a course and a group with her called Wealth Mastery, and we're looking at automation and how that makes your life easier in the finance world around automating cash flow and automating payments and automating deposits so that you're not looking at it all the time that you can actually get freedom and I've resisted it for a long time because I thought it was controlling and it was not I wasn't going to know and I would didn't have a lot of trust and I'm not going to tell you that I'm not still working through some of that but what I got was that the automation freed up psychic real estate in my brain to do other things that I didn't have to worry about it and so, and then the other thing is I'm looking at a health plan, a, f a fueling plan right now, and I'm looking at Susan Peterson's uh, Bright Line Eating, and she calls it automat automaticity, I think it is, and it just reinforces many of the things that we know about productivity, but it's automating these habits while you're trying to learn these new habits, and they tie a community around it. So... You want to look for experts and follow other people that are already doing it and maybe emulate them until you can figure out for yourself or build the, the competency and the capability on your own uh, to make that happen. And in, in this practice thing, you know, you know, what's really critical about the practice and trying something new is you have to be very comfortable to be outside your comfort zone. If you're somebody that needs to be an expert at something right out of the get-go, or you're kind of a natural athlete, or a natural, you have a natural area and it came really easy for you, it's gonna be harder to learn new things unless you can get really comfortable outside your comfort zone. And I love this quote, you wanna be more than okay not doing it right. And you wanna be more than okay not knowing what to do. You're learning. You'll figure it out. You know, want to celebrate and acknowledge trying and learning because that's the growth process. That's how you're going to do it. So with my clients, you know, we're always looking at what is the growth that they desire and then what skills might be missing or that you need to grow. And I use an individual development plan that was a tool that we used when I was in the Bell system on how you identify and capture on an annual basis more or less your goals, your your long and intermediate goals, but in a very, it's on a one pager. And then the current year, and then it's what are your strengths and what's your focus for development. And Darren Hardy has a couple of great tips about how you view development, personal as well as professional. He, uh, some several years back, he talked about, you know, in your annual planning, if you identify four skills that you want to build, you know, maybe it's productivity, maybe it's decision making, maybe it's your physical health, um, you know, whatever those four skills that you would like to add to your toolkit in a year, what you would maybe want to do is um, assign one in priority order to each quarter and then go about how you're going to learn that. Strategically make a plan and part of your quarterly plan is to include this professional development in that. And so that could include the books that you're going to read. His suggestion is go on Amazon, find the top 10 books in that subject area. You know, you might look for webinars. You know, when we do do conferences again, you might, you know, find a conference that quarter to go and get some in-person learning about that. 
Um, there's summits. There's all different kinds of things. There could be podcasts. You want to put together the plan that you're actually going to complete as part of all the other things that you're doing to make sure that your professional development is, is up there. And the one that he said most recently is that you want to invest. You want to have part of your budget included for development. And his guideline is 10% of your annual income. And whatever that is for you, you want to make sure that you have a budget for this development work that's going to happen because it's going to be very critical and it's it's very important to your success. So um, I, I just want to say that it, it's a continuous process. You want to think strategically about it. You want to include it in a plan. You want to allocate resources to it and make sure that you have funding set aside to live within a spending plan for that development, for the purchases that you're going to want to make to support your development. You're going to want to have some patience and get really comfortable learning how to try new things and not worry about not knowing what to do. Just know that in the past when you confronted that, you figured it out and you learned what to do. And, you know, it's really true. If you're not growing and improving, you're falling behind and things are happening so rapidly um, that it requires a deliberate, intentional focus on what you're gonna do um, to continue to grow and continue to develop skills. So one of the things that's really key is that you could find a mentor. <clears throat> and a mentor would be somebody that is willing to be in a relationship with you, that's willing to you know, help accelerate your learning curve and help that. And just like every other networking tool, it can't be a one-way street. So you want to look at your network. You want to identify some people that may already be doing something that you think is important. But you want to nurture and cultivate that relationship. You don't want to come straight out of the chute asking, can you mentor me? You want to cultivate a relationship, see how you might be able to support each other in some way. And then at the appropriate time, ask, you know, would you be willing to mentor me? I want to learn about this. And it seems like you, you've mastered that already. And I, I'd like to understand that a little bit more and 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 how can I support you or what would I be willing to do so it's kind of the go-giver mentality around how you would maybe do that so and, and then the mentoring you know and finding somebody that's already done it I mean that's what I do with my coaching clients and my mentoring clients is they're seeking me out because of my experience with transformation my experience with growth development and learning <clears throat> And um, I'm helping them to put together their strategies and especially around development and how they're going to learn and grow during the course of the relationship that we have where we're working together. So if that seems like something that you might be interested in, I'm going to encourage you to go to my website, tira at tirajarvis.com. And in the free section, there's, there's actually three resources there that you might find helpful. But the, the breakthrough discovery session, if you're looking, if you're stuck, and, and being stuck is one of the blocks to a fulfilling life. So if you, you are stuck and it would be helpful to have an independent person kind of look with you and shine a light on what might that source of being stuck might be for you, consider the, the complimentary uh, discovery breakthrough session. And then my audio program, The Fulfillment Formula, is there. And also, I have a um, transformation guide and journal that you might find really helpful. So today, it's been about a commitment to continuous learning and how you invest in yourself. And, you know, the, the one thing about um, an attitude towards owning your own development is whatever you choose to do, nobody can take that away from you. You know, if you're waiting for your employer to send you to class or to grow your skills like it's part of your employee um, negotiation, con your employee contract, you may get left out um, and you may not grow. But if you're doing it for yourself, and you, you may find that you have some empowerment in that and that you really can um, affect your own life by taking control of your own development personal and professional. And there's a lot there's a lot more fun in it. If you can get comfortable with concentration and being patient and really allowing yourself the grace to not be an expert at something right away while you're learning. All right? So with that, I'm going to I'm going to say good say good morning, have a great day. Chrissy, always great to see you. I hope all's well with you. 
Uh, look forward to connecting with you sometime in the future. And with that, I'll be here next week, Transformation Tuesday. Let me know what you think about my new backdrop. I'm kind of loving it. I'm not sure. I like looking at it. It's a it's a peony sticky wallpaper. So uh, I'm I'm kind of loving it. So let me know what you think. Uh, put your comments in the uh, in the Facebook group or in the Facebook page wherever you've seen this video. All right. Have a great day. Have an amazing week, and I look forward to connecting with you next Tuesday for Transformation Tuesday. Bye for now. This is Tira Jarvis signing off. Take care. Bye bye.